It's our last day here in Johnson Valley for King of the Hammers, and I told you guys that I would share what my thoughts are on the Tacoma this week. <laughs> I have been working just absolutely night and day for the last month to turn this from what was a bone stock 21 Toyota Tacoma into potentially my next rock crawler. I'd like to have a dedicated rock crawler for the next year while I do some major surgery on my Jeep, and I think that this could be the perfect candidate. So now that I've got a whole bunch of seat time in it, I've driven it all over Johnson Valley, I wanted to share what I think about this truck. We fed this truck a healthy diet of rocks all week. We did lots of bombing through the desert. We did lots of retorquing of bolts. So far, the only thing that has been a problem is I lost a caliper bolt, but we were able to find one really quickly, torque, retorque those as well, and just give this a true shakedown run here in the desert. I haven't built skid plates for it yet. I just didn't have time. So I'm being picky about the trails we choose, starting with easy, working our way up to medium, which a lot of these medium trails people would say are hard, but for us, we do a lot of rocks, so I would say pretty much everything we hit this week was relatively easy. I wanna start by talking about the suspension. It's kind of the bulk of the mods that we did over the last month, and I've gotten a ton of questions about it already. I put the very first miles on this truck here in Johnson Valley. We basically put the last bolt in, drove around the block, threw it on the trailer, and brought it down here, and the ride quality is outstanding. The rear suspension is doing very well. Uh, it is soft, it's softer than the front, so it favors a lot more use out of the rear, which I think is to be expected on a build like this with IFS. IFS is just hard to get to compress. So my solution is not to run a stiffer spring because I love the way it rides now. What I wanna do is probably add a soft rear sway bar because then whenever the axle is starting to twist up and down, it's gonna increase spring rate and hopefully transfer a little bit more of that workload up to the front suspension. The rear shocks are coilovers from Bill Stein. They are 9200s, and the uh, front are Bill Stein 8112s. Both are right outstanding, whether I'm going fast through dirt roads or anything like that, or if I'm you know, rock crawling, it, it, they just feel really good. And there's no sway bars on it now, so it does lean a little bit on the highway, but when we drove out to get uh, gas and stuff like that, we were able to uh, just take it freeway speeds, it was completely stable, everything rode great. The front suspension is the RCLT HD from Marlin Crawler, and <laughs> it's just so good. Lots of ground clearance, it's super beefy. We uh, torqued everything down, so I haven't had really any problems with anything coming loose, and the alignment seems to be pretty spot on as well. One thing that I wanna point out about the suspension system that a lot of people wouldn't believe if you didn't see it with your own eyes, but this is a 38 inch tall tire, and I have not touched the cab mount at all. That is the factory paint that came on there from Toyota, and it's because it's a plus 3.5, so it pushes your wheelbase out seven inches in the front, we have a good offset for our wheel, which brings the tires in nice and tight. And so the scrub radius is money. The steering is nice and light because of the tight scrub radius. And because the RCLT moves the front suspension forward two inches, we didn't have to touch that cab mount. And as you can see, it's not rubbing. I've been wheeling it all week. This is five days of Johnson Valley. <laughs> so the shadow is gonna be a little bit messed up here, sorry. But I wanna show you that we've got no paint or anything focus well i did my best there we go we focused so as you can see i mean <laughs> that's the factory paint that came on this truck it's not rubbing at all so i'm very pumped about that the next thing i want to talk about is bumpers sliders a lot of that stuff that i did last week actually exactly a week ago today um, and just talk about how it's all performing. The front bumper, high clearance, looks awesome, very happy with it. Actually, it's grown on me a lot. Originally, I thought it looked okay, but now I actually really like the look. The rear bumper is a game changer because it's cut nice and high. Our departure angle has been super good. We dropped down a couple waterfalls, and uh, I thought for sure it was just gonna be grinding the whole way down, but by selecting the right line, going down at kind of an angle in this really nice, tall, rear bumper, it made it to where it was pretty easy to navigate. We've got a couple dingers underneath there, but nothing too crazy. But as far as the sliders, I, I like the look. I think that they've been working. I mean, I've been rubbing them into a lot of very big rocks out here, but the little kick out at the back, it works as good as I thought it would. And I've, I know a lot of people who have a little kick out like this. I think it looks awesome, but 
I don't like the extra stress that it puts whenever, you know, it, the slider is at one position all the way down a rock, and then it puts all this extra tension on it at the very end to try to kick it away from the bed. So I'm definitely gonna be doing a version 3.0 of these sliders, which is just fine. These go together really quickly. I mean, I could whip up a set of these relatively fast. So the fenders, I like the fenders. They look awesome. They're way too wide for rock crawling, which I knew going into it, but I don't know of any fenders for this, specifically front fenders is what I'm looking for, that have a bigger than stock wheel well opening and then also don't balloon out for coverage because of you know pre-running and all the, the kind of desert stuff that these trucks are typically built for. So if you know of anybody who makes a fiberglass fender that has like a very small bulge but also can accommodate like a 35 because these were supposed to accommodate a 35 and with some small trimming they're able to do a 38. So if you know of something that is an alternative to these, please let me know. The rear, we're gonna end up doing a different bed option and I'm still working with the company on that. So we'll do more details whenever that starts to actually turn into a real thing. But I'd like to do a flat bed in the rear and have, uh, have a little bit different fender in the front because these, I've already rubbed the rear a little bit and destroyed uh, some little sections of the, uh, of the wrap but you know rubbing is racing it's rock crawling right it's not that big of a deal i would just i would feel a lot more comfortable trying to navigate this big truck through these trails big truck this wide truck through these trails if the fenders were a little bit tighter to the body these wheels have been great so far because they're completely dot legal they're very lightweight because it's not a bead lock but they have these little ridges that go all the way around that help to like lock the bead in place they call it bead grip or bead lock technology and I've been running nine in the front, eight in the rear all week with no problems, which isn't very low tire pressure. But on rocks, I've seen people blow a bead, you know, under 15 because rocks put a lot of side load. So, so far, all that's holding up, but stay tuned. We're going to do a real snow test. You guys know I like to run like one to four PSI in the snow, depending on the vehicle. So these are definitely going to get tested when we get back and do a snow trip. Look forward to that. The tires, these are the black labels from Milestar and I really like them a lot. So far, they have been super grippy for just being out of the box. They're not even seasoned at all. And I've actually ran into a lot of people here that have ran a bunch of different tires just like me and they really like the black labels. That's what they're running now. They're really affordable. They seem durable so far, but again, as all this stuff unfolds, I need to give this like, you know, six months to a year worth of use before I can give you guys an accurate um, depiction of what the performance is on these tires. I need to put them through their paces. But so far, I'm impressed. I've had a lot of questions as to why I'm running Milestar instead of all the other options that are out there. It's pretty simple. I've ran a ton of different tires over the last, I don't know, 16 or 18 years that I've been wheeling. And this is just another one that's on the list. I've gotten a request from a lot of you to do a review on these tires, so that's what we're doing. We're gonna be wheeling this a lot over the next year. And at the end of it, I wanna give you a very accurate depiction of what I, how these compare to all the other tires that I own. So I've, it's not that I've like, don't use BFG anymore. I love BFG and that's what I run on pretty much everything else. But I wanna give other tire companies an opportunity to wow us and show us what these tires are capable of. So we're gonna hit places like Johnson Valley, the Rubicon. I'd like to drive this up to Canada and wheel some friends up there. That's gonna, these are gonna see a lot of miles. And as you know, more information comes in about these tires, I'm gonna relay all that to you. The Airb lockers that we installed on this truck in the series are fed by a G2 air compressor that I picked up from 4 Parts. One of my Patreon subscribers actually sent me a mount for this that I believe is from a company called Slee Off Road, but I'm not 100% sure. It's just a used part that I got from, uh, from a subscriber. I also mounted the ProComp relay box that's for my switch system on this mount, and I think that it's got a pretty clean finish. That also is something that I picked up from 4 Parts. There's a race going on, and there's helicopters, lots of cars running. Uh, this is going to be a loud video. So we've got uh, the switch panel. This is something I want to talk about. This is the exact same switch panel using the Land Rover. So we got front rear lockers, a bunch of different things, all set up in the same orientation. So it's easy for me to remember. Originally, I'd asked for something that looks super factory, which I love. And there are actually some great options out there. But this is just such a simple setup. And I think that it fits this part of the Tacoma really well. We've got two helicopters now. I thought I'd wake up early, come out here, and uh, throw together a video. The track is actually on the other side of this ridge behind me. 
And so they keep flying from one side to the other to get a bunch of video feed for everyone who's watching the race. So once again, I apologize, but we're gonna finish this thing up. I want to talk about basically everything I like and everything I dislike from my experiences this week with this truck. So let's start with what I don't like. The visibility with this really sucks for rock crawling. When you're used to a Jeep that has fenders that are nice and low, they're close to the body and the tires are out a little bit farther, it's easy to figure out and index yourself on the trail and figure out exactly where your tire placement is. So that's something that is a bummer, but I can work around it. What I'm actually gonna do is install a front camera because that's gonna help a ton in this truck. Um, even with there being a little bit of a rake in the suspension, I still just can't, you can't get a good feeling of what's in front of you over the hood. So I think a camera is gonna help out a whole lot. There's lights all over the dash in this thing. It's just all, pretty much all of it has to do with the rear locker. Uh, I think I have a solve for it, so we'll see. Actually, I'm gonna ask you guys. So I disconnected the rear electric locker and uh, there's lights everywhere. But it was as soon as I put the locker back, like if I just put it on a block of wood or something and plug it in, start the truck, all the lights go away. So what I'd like to do is fool the system somehow and I ran an ohm meter through the locker and it's at like 2.6 ohms, which is insanely low. So my idea was to get a resistor that is 2.6 ohms, put that from one wire to the other and hopefully it'll fool the computer. Um, I, I've called around, no one seems to know. Even people who have done this conversion at four x four shops don't remember what they did. So if you know if this is gonna work with the resistors, please let me know in the comments or if you think that there's another way. Is it as simple as connecting the two wires together? I don't wanna try that because I don't wanna blow up some expensive, mo some expensive module on here, but if you have a suggestion, suggestion I'd love to hear it. I've got an air leak, which is not the end of the world. It's definitely under the hood. I've checked these lockers multiple times, uh, even after I installed them. So I know it's not the lockers. There's, and I can hear it. It's, it's somewhere on the compressor. So I'm gonna have to undo a fitting and dope it up or something and uh, reattach. So that's something that I don't like. Has nothing to do, it's just how the build sits right now. What things I've ran across. This isn't necessarily what I don't like about the truck. I just wanna relay some of the problems that I've been having and some different observations I've made throughout the week. Like we said before, the fenders are a little bit too wide. I would like to find an alternative. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll build something, I don't know. But I wanna, that's something that I'm gonna need to change throughout this year if I'm gonna use it as a full-time rock crawler. The rear end is definitely too narrow. So the, well, we got people wheeling back there. Sorry about that. <laughs> There's gonna be some noise. The rear end is too narrow. It's got two inch wheel spacers on each side. The front is plus three and a half. The rear is only plus two. So in sand or in snow, stuff like that, where the rear end needs to kind of follow in the footsteps of the front end, I'm gonna notice that rear end, like just kind of find, trying to find a rut to be in. And so that's gonna be a little bit of an issue, but I do have a long-term solve for that. I'm working with the company. We're gonna do a four nine inch rear more than likely. Um, the big trick with these is you've gotta have outers that accept these ABS sensors because these new trucks, if you don't have the ABS sensor working, you don't have four wheel drive. So, and that goes for straight axles in the front too. It's a big problem with these. If you can't plug those, those wheel speed sensors in, then you're not gonna be able to shift it into four wheel drive. Stuff that I love about this truck. This is the best steering truck I've ever driven off-road. The, whenever you have, you know, just a traditional straight axle front and you've got links that are connected between your axle and a chassis that are both moving all the time, you get steering input from the road or from the obstacles you're going over, but you're also getting steering input from the suspension. So as the suspension travels, you'll feel that in the wheel a little bit. And uh, it's not a big deal. It's how I've always wheeled, but it's interesting to drive something that doesn't have that. So this only gets feedback from the obstacle. If you're wedged into that tire and you're trying to push, you can feel that. But whenever the suspension is flexing up and down, the wheel is still completely straight because the relationship between your axle and your body isn't changing. The steering is connected to what is essentially the axle and the body all in one unit. So I love the steering. And with this scrub radius being so tight, it is super light. I'm very, very happy about the steering for sure. Other stuff that I love. I think this is the best looking truck that I've ever built. I love the third gen Tacomas ever since they came out. I think that it's just such a sharp looking design and with the right mods that so it can be just some of the best looking trucks on the road. The ground clearance is insane on this truck. It's so good for only being on a 38. It just has such crazy ground clearance. So I only have to worry about the rear end, which is really nice because the rear end is actually pretty high as well because it's not that big of a ring gear, but 
if you can figure out how to get your front tires over the rock, a lot of times you can turn real sharp and try to track one of your rear tires to go over the rock instead of the rear diff. So wheeling it and navigating it over rocks and through rock sections has been awesome. I really, really enjoy driving this off-road. The next thing that I love is the fact that this is super wide. It gives you a lot of faith when you are on off-camber obstacles. So the wheelbase of my, my brother and I were just talking about this like a week ago. The wheelbase of his Jeep is 93 inches. Outside tire to outside tire, this is 87 inches, meaning that this Tacoma is almost as wide as his Jeep is long. I know it doesn't look that wide in pictures and stuff. It's because these fenders hide it really well, but this is ultra wide. And so far I like it being ultra wide. I didn't think that I would like driving something this wide through the trails, but because it's so wide, I'm never worried on anything off camera. Plus it being so long, it's the same thing. It gives you a lot of confidence in going up those steep obstacles. And if you start to go, you know, if it starts to like lean a little bit, it's just not that scary in this truck. And the last thing is that it's only got 8,000 miles. It's, it's a brand new truck still. So we definitely ruined warranty on all the parts we replaced, right? But I think that there shouldn't be, so Jeep, I know you can put 40s on their rigs and if you have a transmission problem or an engine problem, they warranty it. So like if you just do suspension, but we did here, you put bigger wheels and tires on it, you put suspension on it, it doesn't affect that other stuff, probably depending on what dealer you go to. I'm hoping Toyota will honor this truck in the same way because it being a low miles truck is what I actually really like about it. We've taken something that is super reliable, we've made it more reliable by replacing all these weak components. These suspension components are not very strong uh, and steering components are not very strong in stock form. So we've increased the reliability when it comes to the durability of all the parts that we're gonna put a hurting on, but we're still gonna have the reliability of a low miles brand new truck. When you're driving this through the desert, there's no rattles, it still feels and drives just like a brand new rig. And that's one of my favorite things about it. As we wrap up this video, I want to apologize in advance. I didn't film much this week. I wanted to give myself time to breathe. It, it was tough to do like the 14 hour days in the shop, editing every night, and just a month of that pace to get this done for King of the Hammers broke me. So. I've been partying every night with friends. I've been hitting the trails every day with friends. I've been meeting up with sponsors and doing things with them. And this has been a business trip that I have been able to get away with not doing a ton of camera work and it has been wonderful. So I apologize. I know a lot of you are excited to see this on the trail and the very next video you will, whether it's something from here or it's a snow, we're absolutely gonna be doing a trail video very soon. So again, I apologize. I just, I'm a person. This, I'm the whole production crew here. I've, I've burned myself out a little bit on this one and I just needed a little bit of time to breathe. So I hope that this video answered a bunch of your questions and you know, as far as what parts we used and how I think about the truck and all that other stuff. Um, but the next one is gonna be fun. We're just gonna go out on the trail. We're gonna have fun somewhere with this truck and you can see firsthand how it performs.